so the next part of the discussion here is that is mixtures we go to the mixtures uh, mixtures you can take that is these are the uh, mixtures are the substances substances uh, made of constituent constituent particles or components particles or components components which uh, do not chemically react with each other which do not chemically react are simply called as mixtures and if you go for the mixtures uh, they can be separated mixtures mixtures you can that means separate separation let me go like this separation of separation of the components in the mixture components or the substances in the mixture can be done separation of components in mixture is done through physical methods physical methods like uh, physical methods like you can take that is filtration filtration distillation distillation solvent extraction solvent extraction magnetic separation magnetic separation so on and so forth these are the simple methods actually if you take some examples of uh, mixtures so let me put it in this way examples of mixtures if you take plenty of examples you can take Ex actually mixtures are always heterogeneous mixtures can never be homogeneous they are always heterogeneous so if you take uh, heterogeneous plenty of examples you can take that is if you take uh, examples of mixtures that is iron plus sulfur iron iron filings plus plus sulfur iron filings right, and iron filings and sulfur this is iron filings and sulfur is a best mixture so you can add few more that is gunpowder is the best example gunpowder if you take potassium nitrate plus charcoal and sulfur is gunpowder then all alloys are also mixtures alloys are mixtures and they are also called solid solutions solid solutions for example if you take copper copper and zinc will form brass equal proportions of copper and zinc in the molten state very hot molten liquids of copper and zinc when they are heated to high temperature and again upon cooling they become solids but uh, ultimately they give rise to alloy that is brass brass and copper and tin sn is tin sn the symbol of tin is sn latin name stannum so this is bronze and so on likewise you can take uh, that is uh, kerosene kerosene oil kerosene oil dyes then salt solution salt water then uh, that is lemonoids 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 then beverages beverages milk you can also add milk milk solution all this comes under that is mixture so what is interesting here in all this is like they are always a separate entities like for example if you take one small illustration i am going to give you suppose if you take this uh, iron and sulfur for example why they are called as mixtures one proof if you if you try to understand properly then definitely 
we can clearly observe that it's a mixture so for example if you take iron take this mixture iron and sulfur this iron and sulfur is a mixture so what i'm doing here is like i am bringing one magnet you bring a magnet which is made up of one north pole and one south pole because iron is a magnetic substance it will get attracted okay and you can find that all the iron filing particles the pieces of iron the fragment of iron particles they stick to the magnet and uh, the remaining compound component that is sulfur it remains unattracted in this way this is nothing but a physical process you are trying to separate the 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 iron filing particles from the sulfur through physical method as already i told you the mixture components the components which are present in the mixture they chemically do not react but definitely they can be separated through physical method so this is one kind of physical method on the other hand if you want to separate sulfur from the iron you add a solvent carbon disulfide solvent if you add carbon disulfide solvent then you find that this carbon disulfide takes away the sulfur leaving behind the iron so successfully we are separating both the iron and sulfur separately and successfully we are able to separate both the iron and sulfur through the physical methods so here if you go to the mixtures again if you go to the mixtures uh, classification of mixtures based on classification of mixtures based on that is based on miscibility miscibility is nothing but ability of the two components ability of the two substances or the two components or the two constant particles which are present in the mixture if they are able to dissolve with each other if they are able to completely dissolve dissolving ability i can put it in simple word like dissolving ability so suppose before going to the classification of uh, mixtures based on the miscibility i will give you some examples that is you can take for example i am giving you some examples you can take sodium chloride dissolved in water is one example copper sulfate dissolved in water is one example sugar dissolved in water is one example chalk in water is one example then uh, sand sand in water sand in water sugar sand sugar and sand mixtures then uh, ink in water ink in water if you take only very few i can say that i can say that copper sulfate that means here if you take copper sulfate in water co so for is copper sulfate and if it if you take sugar uh, copper sulfate completely dissolves in water you find that the solution is for these two cases if you take a container and if you observe the container you find that the solution is quite homogeneous copper sulfate with water is completely homogeneous that means copper sulfate completely dissolves in water it is homogeneous it it becomes the the copper sulfate completely dissolves and you can see that there is a color change you find that there is a blue color blue color you find that there is a blue color so it becomes homogeneous even sugar in water also you can expect that sugar in water also the solution is going to become quite transparent it becomes uh, quite transparent the sugar becomes quite transparent and uh, you can see that it is a colorless solution that means all the all the sugar particles all the sugar particles which are present in the sugar they are completely dissolved in water and it becomes homogeneous obviously but if you take the rest of the cases rest of the cases chalk in water uh, chalk in water sand in water sugar and sand in water or simply ink in water and also sodium chloride in water all these are heterogeneous heterogeneous mixtures here also these are heterogeneous mixtures heterogeneous mixtures can be called as a mixture can be called as solution here also mixture we can call it as solutions solutions actually here what is interesting here is in all these cases what kind of solutions what kind of mixtures we are able to perform we are able to perform a mixtures mixture in the form of mixtures in the form of 
solids dissolved in liquids so definitely this mixture can become a solution this mixture can become a solution and one of the most important aspect in uh, uh, homogeneous uh, mixture is apart from homogeneous mixture is the alloy solutions alloys copper plus zinc copper plus zinc both in the molten state copper molten zinc also molten then it gives a solution called copper zinc alloy copper zinc alloy solution solution this is definitely homogeneous all alloy solutions are definitely homogeneous they are uniform this is one of the important point which you have to keep it in your mind so what we are noticing here is solid we are dissolving in uh, water solid we are dissolving in water and here because we are using the word solution because we are using the word solution the when solid is dissolved in liquid actually when if when a solid when it is dissolved in liquid it forms a solution and this process we call it as dissolution we call this process as dissolution when a solid is dissolved in liquid and if temperature rises if some factors are operating some temperature if you are using the temperature then this temperature when the temperature increases more and more amount of solid dissolves in liquid when temperature increases and uh, you find that the solubility the ability of the given component in the mixture which is able to completely dissolve is nothing but solubility its solubility also increases upward arrow is increasing when the temperature decreases on the other hand when the temperature decreases the solubility decreases it is vice versa so keeping this point in our mind we we are able to clearly understand that we may be getting some doubt how sodium chloride in water can become heterogeneous what is interesting here is when you add sufficient amount of sodium chloride in water sodium chloride is a solid component in the mixture and water is a liquid component in the mixture when you are adding sodium chloride in water and when you stir it continuously as long as the stirring is taking place the particles of the sodium chloride they break they become uniform and they dissolve in water that means when you are stirring you are also indirectly allowing some amount of heat from the outside of the beaker to enter into the solution and with that heat all the particles they break the lattice is going to break in the sodium chloride and all the particles in the form of ion they become mobile and you find that the solution looks transparent but after few seconds or after few minutes if you just observe uh, and if you keep it for a long standing once the cooling takes place after the cooling you find that suddenly all the sodium chloride particles if i take this as a beaker for the sodium chloride after cooling you find that a small thick layer is absorbed that means these are the nacl crystals nacl particles which are again settling at the bottom and rest of the top layer is transparent this is all water so it is clear that now upon cooling you find that when when the system is when the system is subjected to cooling when the mixture of sodium chloride and water is subjected to cooling again all the sodium chloride particles are settling at the bottom that is why we can confirm that always sodium chloride dissolved in water is nothing but a heterogeneous mixture or heterogeneous solution if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus